everyone. This is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I have a new dyeing experiment for you. I want to try to break um, Kool-Aid's grape. And by breaking, we mean that I'm hoping that the color will split into its components, which, if you look at the um, ingredients, it's too small, but you can see that it contains both red and blue food coloring. I mean, it's purple, but we, that's what you would expect. And on the channel, you will see a number of other breaking color videos. Now, in the past, when I've dyed with grape, um, I used a wool acrylic blend, and I added wet yarn to the pot, and I did not see any breaking. But today, I'm going to use 100% wool, um, Knit Picks Peruvian Highland Wool and Fingering Weight, 100 grams. And I'm going to add this to the dye bath dry. Why? Because we've seen the most uh, breaking and kettle type um, tonal effects by adding dry yarn directly so maybe that is what we can observe here today and so in this pot I have starting to warm up 10 cups of water and I'm going to add four packets of Kool-Aid now it's possible that we could get some tonal variation by adding the by, mix, by mixing the dyes first and then add, pouring them into the pot with the yarn already in the pot. But I think that I want to start with dry yarn um, because I think that I might get a little more luck. And this way I can have the grape Kool-Aid brew dissolve um, completely. And so we're not quite at a boil yet. Um, and we're we get to a boil, then we'll turn the heat down so we're just below. Although actually, I'm seeing some bubbles, so we might be pretty close. Um, oh, whoops! <laughs> that was not intentional. Um, the nice thing about dining with Kool-Aid is it smells so much better than vinegar. In terms of cost, it's much more cost effective to purchase food coloring and vinegar than it is to buy Kool-Aid because some of the colors of Kool-Aid have small amounts, actually pretty small amounts of, uh, have small amounts of dye. But the nice thing is that in all one pot you get a wonderful smell and you have the citric acid which is the acid source. So now we're going to bring this to a boil and I'm going to cover it and when I come back we should be ready to gently add our yarn to the pot. So I'm not at a boil, but I'm at a pretty strong simmer. And I'm going to take this time to reduce the heat because I don't want to ruin boil because we do not want to risk our yarn melting. And now with the help of my slotted spoon, I'm going to slowly submerge the yarn. I figure the worst that can happen from this experiment is that we'll get an all-over purple color. And since we know that I love purple, there are much worse problems to have. And now, you know, one thing... Oh, look at that! See, we got a spot that's more blue looking. Um, so, you know, there's different things that could happen. We could end up with different tones of the one purple color, or we could have succeeded in having the reds strike first, so we could see some breaking between the pinks, blues, and reds in this food coloring. But we will have to see. That's why this is an experiment. And if it doesn't quite work out how we want, um, I have some other ideas of things to try to get this to work. But I think that we are seeing some color breaking um, because I see some spots that look more blue and others that look more purpley already. So I'm going to cover this yarn and let this sit for about well, maybe 15 minutes and then we'll come back and check and see where we are. So 12 minutes in, 
it was bubbling a little too much for my taste, so I decided to turn the heat off. And we'll check and see what's left in terms of exhausting. And since we don't see a lot of color in here, it looks like it's most of the color is in fact in the yarn at this point. But even though now that the heat is off, I'm going to let the yarn cool in the bath um, until I can reach in and pick it up comfortably. And this will also allow any residual colors to set. And I'm of course avoiding agitating the yarn. Alright, this has cooled to the point where I would call it lukewarm. And you can see that we definitely have some variation of color. Hooray! Now to what extent you know that exists we'll have to see like after it's dried and we'll have to figure out whether we're actually seeing breaking or if it's really just tonal variation. But at this part that I'm looking at right here there's definitely a part that's much more blue. I'd say this is a more pinky red than purple. So I really think we did get some breaking and it's not just a tonal variation. Alright, now I'm going to move to the sink and I'm just going to rinse this um, in the usual way with um, some dish soap and cool water because this is already like, below, not even lukewarm anymore, it's already cool until the water runs clear and then I will hang it up to dry. And once it's dry, we'll be back and we'll see what the final steam looks like. Well folks, here we have it. Um, we have successfully broken grape Kool-Aid. As you can see, there are some areas that are distinctly blue and areas that are very much purple. Um, there are certainly areas that are darker purple and lighter purple. Um, this section isn't as blue, but um, there's definitely some spots that I would call distinctively blue. Um, the, the red food coloring um, in this Kool-Aid dyed yarn struck extremely fast. Um, and so I would say um, that there's probably a lot more red dye in the mix than there is blue, but we were able to break grape Kool-Aid. So thank you everyone for coming along with me on this dyeing experiment. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz.